Ali narrated in an authentic hadith that the Prophet said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La Ya Ali, no one loves you except that he's a believer. Every believer has to love Ali ibn Abi Talib. If you have something in your heart against Ali ibn Abi Talib, then there is not a small, but a big question mark over your Islam. Verily Allah wants to purify you and clean you up, O Ahl al-Bayt. And He wants to give you the complete, absolute purification. That's the Ahl al-Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Ali was from the Ahl al-Bayt. He was an Imam of Ahl al-Bayt. And they have a special position in this religion. He used to read Salah at night, every single night. And he used to fast a lot in terms of voluntary fasts. So the people asked him, Oh Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, you know that you are from paradise, yet you are standing at night and you are fasting every day. What is it? So he looks at them and he says, he says the journey to the life after, meaning the journey into paradise is a very long journey. You need to travel towards it by night. Listen to this. By night, if you are fast asleep all the time, your journey to paradise is going to be made more difficult. You really want to travel into paradise? Well, you better start traveling by making the journey at night. Stand up in salah for Allah. You see that Abu Bakr was the Khalifa for two years and they were two years where there were yani, virtually no problems. Umar radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa for 10 years. Uthman radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa for 12 years. But 10 of these years, there were no problems. The fitan and problems only happened in the last two years. But when Ali radiallahu anhu became the Khalifa, the minute he became the Khalifa, there were problems already. He did the best that he could to unite the Muslims. For four years and nine months to unite the Muslims together. A man one time came to Ali radiallahu anhu. He says, why is it that at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, there were no problems? And at your time, it's so full of problems. So Ali radiallahu anhu tells him, because at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, they ruled over people like me. And in my time, I rule over people like you. He was born in Makkah al-Mukarramah and he was approximately 30 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something interesting is the man who looked after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the death of his grandfather was the father of Ali who was known as Abu Talib. This Abu Talib was the uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who defended Islam and the Muslims but he did not accept Islam himself. And he had a son known as Ali ibn Abi Talib. They had a very, very good relation from a very young age. And the reason is Abu Talib went through some difficult time in his life. There was a time when he could not afford to look after his children. So he decided to take two of the three children he had to his relatives. So he took one to Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who was his brother. And he told him, would you look after one of my children? So Al-Abbas says, I will look after Ja'far, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. He then approached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, would you look after one of my children? And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I will look after Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Ali radiallahu anhu, his age was approximately five to six years old when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to take care of him. So he grew up with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadija binti Khawailid radiallahu anha. They were so close. He used to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherever he went. Most places that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go, they found Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu walking with him as a young boy. So much so that even the cave of Hira that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to meditate in, sometimes Ali ibn Abi Talib would join him radiallahu anhu. So when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted prophethood by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ali ibn Abi Talib, who loved him so much, was the first from amongst the boys to accept Islam. That Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadija reading salah. And he asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are you doing? So he said, I am worshipping Allah who made me. And I do not worship the idols. The idols are wrong. 
it is wrong to do what Quraysh is doing. And he explained to him what Islam was and he invited him to Islam. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu accepted the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was a young boy, perhaps approximately 10 years old. When the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to al Medina, and then he left behind Ali ibn Abi Talib. He told Ali, I want you to remain behind and I want you to remain in my bed so that the non-Muslims would think that I'm still here. And Ali radiallahu anhu remained in the bed of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the people came to the bed of Rasulullah and they were about to stab him and lo and behold it was Ali. Another very important point as to why Ali remained behind is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in possession and he was in charge of the amanat. He had the trust that was left to him by many of the people because he was known as Muhammad al-Amin, the trustworthy one. So he left Ali behind so that when he made the hijrah, when he went to Medina, Ali was responsible for giving everyone their money back that Rasulullah had in his possession. There came a time the second year after the hijrah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was married to the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam known as Fatima binti Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what exactly happened? Ali ibn Abi Talib was one day at home sitting and he had a slave. She rushed actually to Ali ibn Abi Talib saying to him, have you heard that Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Somebody asked for her hand in marriage. He said, no, I didn't hear about that. She said, why didn't you go to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ask for her hand? Why didn't you marry Fatima? She's the best, she would be the, the best wife for you. He said, but I, I don't have anything to present or to give it as a dowry. So how can I approach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding that? She said, you just go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I'm sure he will give her to you. He will allow you to marry her. Ali ibn Abi Talib pulled himself all together and uh, managed to put his carriage all together and went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knocked on the door, he was given permission to go in, he went in, gave salam and sat down. He said, I wanted to speak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about that, I wanted to tell him about my intention and my desire to marry Fatima. But he said, I couldn't because the Prophet ﷺ was such a great person and you could feel the greatness, so you won't dare ask him something like that. So he said, I sat there embarrassed. The Messenger ﷺ looked at me and he said, what did you come for? Do, do you need anything? I didn't speak. I said, no, 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 there's nothing. For the second time, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Ali, why did you come here? Do you have anything to request? Do you have any wish? He said, my fear, my embarrassment did not allow me or did not give me enough courage to speak to the Prophet ﷺ and request or ask the hand of Fatima. I said, no, no, I didn't come to ask for anything. So the Prophet ﷺ looked at him and smiled and said, haven't you come to ask for the hand of Fatima in marriage? He could tell what Ali came for. Ali ibn Abi Talib with all embarrassment, said, yes indeed. The Messenger ﷺ said to him, so what do you have to offer? By Allah, our Messenger of Allah, I have nothing to offer. He says, oh Ali, you have an armor. What about that? He said, yes, I do have the armor. He said, well, you can sell the armor and give the amount to my daughter. So listen to what Ali ibn Abi Talib did. He went out to the market to sell his armor. So Uthman ibn Affan, who was married to the other daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, oh Ali, what are you doing? He says, I'm here to sell my armor because I am about to marry the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima. Uthman was so happy. He said, can I pay you for it? What do you want? He says, I want 400 dirhams. He says, okay, no problem. Here is the 400. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Uthman ibn Affan calls him back and says, oh Ali, this is a gift from me to you. Here is an armor. You can have this. Subhanallah. So he went back with the armor and with the 400 as well. Subhanallah. And he went to give it and he told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about what Uthman ibn Affan had done. 
and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so delighted and so happy. Imagine these were now family members related to one another. They had big hearts. May Allah grant us ease. This was the love between Uthman and Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. They were brothers in law and they loved each other from the very beginning. They were married and they, the ceremony was not even what we would see today. It was something that was an agreement between them. They had the witnesses that were there, simple occasion. And this was one of the most blessed of all marriages ever. May Allah grant us ease. And Fatima radiallahu anha, we all know her position amongst the women of the world. And she also uh, resembled the Prophet sallam, and she spoke like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Aisha radiallahu anha says that I never saw anyone whose speech more closely resembled that of the Prophet ﷺ than Fatima. And whenever she entered, the Prophet ﷺ would stand up to greet her. This is the Prophet of Allah, standing up to greet her. And then he would kiss her and welcome her. And she would do the same thing for him. So Ali anhu marries Fatima anha, And of course, they have Al-Hasan and al Hussein. Now, did they have any daughters? Zainab and... Um Kulthum. And it's also interesting to note that the names of her daughters were similar to the names of her sisters, right? Uh, among the virtues of Fatima radiallahu anha, the Prophet ﷺ said that Fatima is a part of me and whoever angers her angers me. The hadith in Bukhari and in Muslim. Ali radiallahu anhu, he had a misunderstanding with his wife, Fatima, something that happens between every man and every wife. When the Prophet came to the house of Fatima and he asked, where is Ali? She said, we had a misunderstanding and an argument, Ya Rasulullah. So he left and he went into the masjid. Rasulullah did not become angry at Ali for having a misunderstanding with his daughter. And he took the side of his daughter and then he went to get the husband, the son-in-law. No, he knows that this is something that is normal and natural. So he went to Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. And he woke him up. And when Ali got up, he had dirt all over him. So Rasulullah said, get up, O Abu Turah. Get up, father of the dirt. And he used to be loved to be called by that kunya because it was given to him by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the time of revelation, used to call Ali sometimes and ask him to write because he could read and write. Yet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was unlettered. He was also amongst the scholars and he also was very ascetic and he left the the materialism of this dunya and he was known for his piety and he was a very very powerful and eloquent orator excellent in speech and he was a warrior like none other and he witnessed all the battles with the prophet sallam, except for the battle of tabuk he needed someone in al Medina, someone left behind to be responsible for the community so what did he do? He used to choose different people. On this occasion, he chose Ali. Ali, you stay behind to protect the Muslims, to protect their property, to protect their monies, to protect their blood, their honor. Ali, he wasn't comfortable with that. Ya Rasulullah, are you going to go out and you going to leave me behind with the women and the children? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told Ali, Ya Ali, what is your position? How do you feel? If you remain behind, you will be like Harun was to Musa. That's how you would be for me. But there's no prophet after me. That's a tremendous hadith showing the superiority of Ali. And many times the Prophet would actually give him the standard in battle. And the standard now, you have to be really a tough warrior to get the standard because the standard bearer is going to be sought after. Everyone's going to try to attack the standard bearer because if the standard falls and it doesn't rise again, you lose the battle. So the goal of both armies is to try to attack the standard bearer. So you give the standard always to a tough, tough warrior. So many times he would be given the standard, like the Battle of Badr, for example. In the Battle of Khaybar also he was given the standard. And the Prophet ﷺ, before giving the standard, he said that I'm going to give the standard to a man who loves Allah and his messenger. Now that's of the easier ones. Because everyone says, yeah, I love Allah, I love the Prophet Wasallam. But the second part was that and he is loved by Allah and his messenger. So everybody wanted to be the person who received the standard. Umar radiallahu anhu says, I had never ever like desired or wanted to be in a leadership position before that day. It's because this is someone, whoever will be given the standard, someone loved by Allah and the Prophet Everybody wanted that honor. 
in the morning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, where is Ali, the son of Abu Talib? And immediately they knew that this man, Allah loves him and he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he called Ali and he says, Oh Ali, say the name of Allah and enter into this Khaybar, enter into this fort of Khaybar. And remember the famous statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahi, remember that if Allah guides through you one single person, it is better for you than the most valuable of the camels that we have. From his excellence in battle as well is that he destroyed Al-Walid ibn Utbah in the duels before the battle of Badr. And in the battle of Safin, they described that at one point he grabbed uh, you know, his opponent. He put one hand in and grabbed him from underneath his armor and lifted him in the air and brought him crashing down and breaking his neck. Uh, from his excellence in battle is that he destroyed a legendary, legendary warrior by the name of Amr ibn Abdul this man was a legendary warrior. If he just said his name, that was it. If he said, I'm Amr ibn Abdul nobody wanted to go out to fight him. Nobody challenged him at all. That was it. But on the day of Al Khandaq, the Battle of the Trench, as you know, the Muslims have, had dug a trench in one of the entrances to Medina. And there was a part that was a little bit narrow, and Amr ibn Abdul with a good horse, was able to jump and make it to the other side where the Muslims were. So. He asked, who wants to duel? And no one came out to him because he's Amr ibn Abdul Nobody goes out to him. And there were fantastic warriors in the army, but none of them went out to him. The Prophet asked, who will go out to him? And Ali radiallahu anhu got up. So the Prophet tells him no. So then again, the Prophet asked, who will go out to him? And Ali radiallahu anhu gets up. The Prophet tells him no. And again, he asked, and Ali gets up. The Prophet tells him, this is Amr, you know who this is, a legendary warrior. And Ali radiallahu anhu says, even if it is. And he goes out to meet him. And they describe the, the duel, this fierce battle that they had, that they, would, they started fighting and they were extremely fast, both of them. They would fight and they started to, to go in circles as they're swinging and clashing swords and start to go in circles and kicking up dust. So there, there was so much dust that they couldn't see what's happening. The Muslims just didn't know what was going on. They just saw dust and they could hear swords smashing in the middle of that dust ball. And then suddenly from the middle of the dust they heard, Allahu Akbar! And Ali radiallahu came out and he killed the legendary Amr ibn Abdul. So that was one of the examples of the power of Ali radiallahu anhu in battle. Also in the Battle of Safina, he would go out and fight and he actually had two bodyguards to stop him from going to battle. But at some point, whenever they're not paying attention, he would sneak out and go to uh, and fight and he would only come back when his sword bends. So, and he would say, if the sword didn't bend, Allah wouldn't come back. Powerful. A woman came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he told her to come back at a later date. So she said to the Prophet what if I come back and I cannot find you? And what if you have passed away when I come back after a year or a couple of months? And the Prophet tells her, then go to Abu Bakr. Also is narrated by Ibn Mas'ud. In a Sahih Hadith narrated by Tirmidhi, that the Prophet said, take leaders, those who come after me, Abu Bakr and Umar. And there are many reports from Ali radiallahu an himself. He would say that the best of this ummah after its prophet is Abu Bakr and then Umar. When it comes to the time of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an, many people say that Ali radiallahu an was upset and he did not want Abu Bakr as Khalifa. That is very far from the truth. He was one of the first to stretch his hand when he was in his home and one of the people came to him and told him, do you know what is happening at Saqifah to Bani Sa'idah? The Muhajireen and Ansar have sat and this is what took place and now Abu Bakr is being uh, appointed the leader. He quickly rushed out with half of his clothing on and he went and he stretched his hand and pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. There was no dispute. It is said in his Khilafah, one time he was يعني, in the place of obviously uh, in the, the place of the Khalifa, which is like the position of a judge as well. He can assist and help people. So a man comes to him and he says, Oh, best of people, look into my affair, for I have never seen anyone better than you. But Ali radiallahu anhu gets upset. He says, What about Abu Bakr and Umar? 
So the man says, actually, I never saw them. This is Ali radiallahu anhu not accepting to be in a position higher than Abu Bakr and Umar, which everyone used to say in front of the Prophet ﷺ, they are the best, and the Prophet ﷺ would remain quiet. So there was no doubt in the minds of the believers who were the leaders and who were the best. At the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu as well, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was one of those who pledged allegiance. They had such a powerful relation. When Ali ibn Abi Talib, mashallah, he had many children and he married multiple wives after the death of Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She passed away approximately six months after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the last of the children of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to pass away because all of his children passed away in his lifetime, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, besides Fatima. After that, Ali ibn Abi Talib married the widow of Abu Bakr, as Siddiq radiallahu an. Now, if they were enemies, why would he do that? Secondly, he looked after the child of Abu Bakr as his own child. His name was Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. He was the son of Abu Bakr as Siddiq from Asma binti Umais. And Asma binti Umais radiallahu anha was married to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh after the death of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anh. And after that, he named his children as follows. One of them was Abu Bakr ibn Ali. The other one was Umar ibn Ali. The other one was Uthman ibn Ali radiallahu anhum. So this was the love that they had amongst each other. But there came people later on who created dispute and who created discord. And when Umar radiallahu anhu was stabbed, now they have to choose the third Khalifa. And again, if Ali felt he was cheated the first and second time, and he would want to be the Khalifa the third time because it's his right, if according to what the argument is, so then he would know this is his religious right. He would ask for it. But what happens after Umar anhu was stabbed, he appointed the six people of Shura or the six people that the Prophet ﷺ was pleased with. And so he lets them appoint one of them. So these six have to choose one of them as the successor after Umar. So what happens is Abdurrahman ibn Awf, anhu, he withdraws. And he asks Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, would you want to withdraw as well? So Sa'ad says yes. So now we have two people who withdrew and we have four people left. So then he asked the rest, do you mind if I take care of this and, and, and help you decide the Khalifa? They said, okay. So then he goes to Uthman radiallahu anhu alone. And he says, who do you vote for? And Uthman radiallahu anhu says, Ali. Then he goes to Ali radiallahu anhu and Ali says, Uthman. He didn't say, it's me. This is my right. All of this just nonsense that comes years later on. Then as Zubair ibn al-Awam was asked, he says, Ali or Uthman? And then he goes to Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Sa'ad says, Uthman. Talha radiallahu anhu, by the way, he's the sixth person, but he was away during the time Umar was stabbed. Then after that, he goes to the people of, in Medina. He spent days and he would go and ask people if they approve of Uthman and so on and so forth. And everybody approved. So that was how it was done. They knew it was Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and then came Ali radiallahu anhu. A man known as Abdullah ibn Saba, and he had started major issue against Uthman ibn Affan, claiming that Uthman had appointed all his relatives as people who were the leaders of the various lands of the Muslims. Yet, those were appointed by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu before Uthman. And Uthman had not even changed the bulk of them. But this was just a fitna. When Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu found out the depth of what was happening, he sent a message to Uthman saying, I have with me 500 of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can send them to you now in order to eradicate those who are trying to harm you. Yet those who were trying to harm Uthman were the ones who were saying that Ali should be appointed as Khalif. He said, no ways, these people are wrong. We can send the companions in order to defend Uthman. Uthman, what a great man. But Uthman ibn Affan responded to this. And he said, I would not like to see the blood of Muslims being spilt because of me. I'd rather die than to see massacre amongst the Muslimin. Uthman radiallahu anhu is killed. The Nurain, the bearer of the two lights, the righteous Khalifa. One of the ten given glad tidings of paradise. The husband of Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum, the man who prepared the army of Usra, the one who gave the well of Roma, the one who gathered the Mus'haf and distributed it. And the Imam of the Muslims is killed in such a heartless way. So now, news reaches Ali. 
And he says, May Allah have mercy on Uthman. And the people are remorseful everywhere in Medina. And this was in the 18th of the Hijjah, in the 35th year after the Hijrah, and he was 83 years old. The people of Fitna, they started to try to find the Khalifa after Uthman, who pledged to. But they couldn't agree on who should, the Khalifa should be. But they couldn't find anyone who was going to accept the bay'ah, the pledge. No one wants to become the Khalifa. So now they lost hope, the people of Fitna. So the heads of the people of Fitna gathered, and they gathered the people of Medina, and they said, we give you two days. Some Sahaba then went to Ali and asked him to become the Khalifa. And he refused. He said, we're heading into very difficult times. They told him, we ask you by Allah, don't you see what we see? And Ali radiallahu anh tells him, only because of this situation do I agree. And he stipulated to them that they obey him and they do as he says and agreed to meet the next day in the masjid. So then they gathered the people of Medina and the Sahaba gathered and the people of Fitna liked, liked this idea. This takes place in the 25th of the Hijjah, seven days after the death of Uthman radiallahu anh. So now, the new Khalifa of the Muslims is Ali radiallahu anhu. Muawiyah was the governor for Uthman in Sham. So Muawiyah said, his point of view was, hey listen, I recognize Ali that you have the right to be the Khalifa, but I'm not going to give you the Pledge of Allegiance until we deal with the ones who assassinated Uthman. Because still technically I'm under the authority of Uthman. Plus, Uthman was my relative. Ali said, no, I agree with you. They're wrong. We should deal with them. Just give me the bayah and then we'll deal with them at another time. Right now, there are too many problems going on. So they had a position where they disagreed on that point. And the haq, the truth was, was with Ali. Muawiyah was mujtahid. He was a person who was trying his best. Ali was a mujtahid, trying his best to come up with what was correct. We love all of them. And Allah said that he's pleased with all of them. And they're all in paradise. He once visited the graveyard during his tenure when he was appointed Khalif. And at the graveyard, he said a statement that was a lesson for every one of us. He looked at the graves and he asked a question to those in the graves. He says, I want to inform you, the houses you have left have already been occupied. The wealth that you left has already been distributed and is being spent by others. The wives that you've left are already married to others. This is the news that we have. Tell us about the news that you have. Allahu Akbar. Then he looked at the people and he said, Wallahi, if these people could talk to us, they would tell us the best provision that you can actually have in order to get into the grave would be the piety. Taqwa Allah. Ali radiallahu anhu lost his armor at one stage when he was the Amir. And so when he went to Kufa, he found a Jewish man selling this armor. He looked at it and he said, Hey, this is my armor. The Jewish man says, no, it's mine. I'm selling it. It's in my hands. So he said, no, let's go to the Qadi. Now the Qadi was known as Shurayh. Shurayh was a powerful Qadi based in Kufa. He was appointed by Ali. Ali ibn Abi Talib went and sat right next to the Qadi. And the Jewish man was in front. And he says, oh Shurayh, this man has my armor. So Shurayh says, oh Amirul Mu'mineen, we need some form of evidence to prove that it is yours. So he says, here are my sons, al Hassan wal Hussein, those who are companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they will bear witness that this armor is mine. So Shuraih says, I am very sorry, O Amirul Mu'mineen, with all due respect, a, a child cannot bear witness for his own father here, according to the law of Islam. So I will have to rule that this armor belongs to the Jewish man. The Jewish man was stunned. He was shocked. To the degree that he said, I am so shocked. This is Amirul Mu'mineen, the leader who rules so many lands. And he is sitting here in front of a Qadi that is under him. And he has just given me this armor. He says, no ways. I bear witness that this is the true deen. I bear witness that Allah is one and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger. Immediately he accepted Islam. Ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was martyred when he was approximately 63 years old, the 40th year of Hijrah, by a man known as Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. 
how it all began is that there were three of the Khawarij and discussing the affairs of the Ummah. One of them said, all of the problems we have today are because of Muawiyah. The other said, all of the problems we have today are because of Ali. And the third one said, Amr ibn As is not far from those two either. So they decided right then and there to get rid of these three. And so they agreed to kill all three of them at the same time. Of course, all three were in different areas. But they agreed that after Fajr prayer on the 17th of Ramadan, so all of them left to these different cities, a man by the name of Al-Burq ibn Abdullah al-Tamimi, he goes to Asham to kill Muawiyah. And he prays Fajr behind him. And as Muawiyah left the masjid after the Salah, he lifted his sword to strike Muawiyah radiallahu anh. Muawiyah noticed that. He caught the sword going up and he jumped out of the way. So he got cut, but it didn't, يعني, it didn't kill him. Then the other man, the man goes to Amr ibn al-As, the, the second man. And after the Salah, he jumped and started to stab him. And he killed him and said, Allahu Akbar. And then he discovers that Amr ibn al-As, Allah, he was sick that day, so he actually killed the wrong man. The man who went to Ali radiallahu anhu, his name was Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. And this man, he came to Al-Kufa, where Ali radiallahu anhu was. And he found Ali radiallahu anhu coming into the masjid, calling the people for salah. Ayyuhal nas, as-salah, as-salah. And so, this is before the salah. Ibn Muljim takes his, his weapon and he attacks Ali, saying, Al-Hukm Lillah. The judgment is to Allah, not to you, O Ali, nor to your companions. He struck Ali radiallahu anhu in his forehead. And it was a huge wound, and the sword was poisoned. But Ali radiallahu anhu doesn't die immediately. He stays alive for three days. Don't let him get away. So they caught the man. A man by the name of Jundub ibn Abdullah, he enters and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, if we lose you, and I hope we don't, should we pledge to Al-Hasan? And Ali radiallahu anhu says, I do not order you, nor do I prevent you? So then he calls Al Hassan and Al Hussein and he starts to give them very, very beautiful advice. These are now his parting words. So he tells them, I advise you with the taqwa of Allah. And then he tells Al Hassan, if I die, whoever struck me this blow, then it's a blow for a blow. And do not desire the dunya, even if it calls you to it. And do not cry over something that gets away from you. And speak the truth. And have mercy on the orphan. He says, assist the lost and work for the next life. And be the opponent of the oppressor and the supporter of the oppressed and act on what is on the, in the book of Allah and do not fear those who will blame you for doing what is right. Then he turns to his other son Muhammad ibn Hanafiya and he tells him, have you learned what I advise your brothers with? He says, yes, it means, and it means it applies to you as well. And then he tells him, I advise you with the same and I advise you to have respect for your brothers because of the great rights that they have upon you. It means they are the grandchildren of the Prophet ﷺ. So you have to have respect for that. And do not undertake any affair without them. Then he turns to Al Hassan and Al Hussein. He says, I advise you to take care of him. For he is your brother and the son of your father. And you know that your father used to love him. Then he tells Al Hassan, he tells him, O oh son, I advise you with the taqwa of Allah and establishing salah and paying the zakah in its place and perfecting the wudu. And I advise you to forgive others and to control your temper and the ties of the wombs and clemency with the ignorant and understanding of the religion and being conclusive in affairs, meaning don't rush to make decisions and being close to the Qur'an and being good to your neighbor and commanding that which is good and forbidding that which is evil and abstaining from the haram and he keeps on advising them and advising them until he passed away After his death he was washed his sons Al-Hasan and Al-Hussein and Abdullah, the son of Ja'far and uh, Al-Hasan led the prayers and uh, Ali radiallahu anh had remained alive all of Friday, all of Saturday and all of Sunday except he dies Sunday night and he's buried in the city of Al-Kufa and he died at the age of 63. His reign was for four years and nine months. His reign was at a very very difficult time. There were so many people who kept disobeying him. It is part of a religion to love Ali radiallahu anhu and Fatima and Al-Hasan and al Hussein, as well as the mothers of the believers and Bani Hashim and Bani Abdul Muttalib. As the scholars say, they're all part of the family of the Prophet sallallahu